the shot clock. You will see two three zones from the Friars. That has what is what has been their calling card this year. Tim Welsh, a disciple of Jim Beheim of Syracuse. So lots of two three zone. And Pacific will play much more man to man. Big Pacific won the Big West Tournament, beat Cal State Northridge 75-73. And the Tigers find the bottom of the net first. Well, Marker is the guy who is very skillful for this team. 6'9", 230. He was one of those foreign players from Sweden that you alluded to early. Doubt it, not much of an offensive threat inside. A little traveling music. One hop too many. So an early turnover for the Friars, who went 11-5 in Big East play. Their season was interesting because, Bob, they had two six-game win streaks at one time. I'll tell you what, they beat Connecticut at Connecticut. They beat Illinois, neutral site, lost to Texas in overtime in a controversial play at the end. They got a lot of big wins. We played a minute. Pacific by two. Davis for three. Off the iron, Friars up high for the rebound. Dalton cleans the glass. Oh, inside, Gomes the other way, and a whistle. Tough nice to... feed by Sanders. No doubt. Gomes must run hard. He is an All-American. First team All-American, U.S. basketball writers poll. He's much more effective when he powers the ball inside, capable of shooting from the outside, 33% from three-point range. When he's close to the basket, he is devastating. One of the top five players in America, according to the United States Basketball Writers Association. Very few weaknesses. 86% from the line makes his first out of Waterbury, Connecticut. Not a highly recruited player. And he is an automatic double-double. Averages nearly 19 and nearly 10 boards a game. And a good sign for them is when he gets out and runs the floor, they are very difficult to guard. on the wing and then the reach in foul by Kaba. That'll be an interesting matchup tonight. Kaba, the senior from the Bronx. He has good quickness. For Providence, they finished third in the Big East. Pretty good league. Number five seed in the tournament. That is the best in the history of the school. And they are led by this All-American, Ryan Gomes. A couple of early turnovers. You would expect a little nerves. Moriker picking up the foot. Steve DeMeo, the assistant coach of Providence, told me right before the game he felt the team was a little bit nervous. And I said, is that a good thing or a bad thing? He says, I'll let you know after five minutes. <laughs> and we played nearly two, tied at two. This is the guy that needs the touches. Oh, nice look inside. Sanders lost the handle, turn it over, and Pacific comes back the other way. Second turnover for the Friars. Well, there is nervous building. Neither of these teams have a home crowd here, so the rooting interest will go as the game goes on. Wow. Three ball finds its way down by Moriker. 5-2 Pacific. Short, Dalton. Now Davis pushes the tempo. Travel. I think he hit Kaba's foot, picked up the pivot, and they got him for the turnover. Illegal to do that. Maya Davis, of course, the player of the year in the Big West, had 24 against Duke. They had played some tough teams, Duke and St. Joseph's. How about that? They are confident. Patient as they threw it around the perimeter. Rebound going. So spot and fire. Has he displayed variety already? Runs the floor, scores inside, and then hits a three. Well, the officials actually want to discuss it. I think they're trying to see whether it's a three or a two. Scott Thornley, Stephen Skiles, and Mark Whitehead, our officiating crew tonight. They're going to take a look. From that angle, tough to see. Maybe a That's toe. That's a three. Right there, you can see it. What we say does not matter, however. May be able to see it from here. 
That's from behind. That's tough. That's tougher to see. I think on, on the front side, you could see it a little bit better. Trying to get things right, which is what technology can help us with. Right there, it looks like he's behind the line to me. Watch how the shot is challenged, however. Christian Marker coming out here to challenge this shot. He's 6'9 and long. This is going to be a great matchup between these two. Referred to before, this will be a Kansas crowd. He's they, calling it a two. They call it a two. Well, let's mark that down and refer to it if it's a one-point game at the end. I think we should. <laughs> This will be a Kansas crowd here. 18,000 will be here shortly in anticipation of the Jayhawks play. And right now, each of these two teams has to win over the crowd with their hustle and determination. That's how it usually goes in these kinds of venues. Boy, Cockle was counted by the double team. Doubly inside. The bucket will not fall. Rebound Providence. McGrath feeds inside. Gold. Give me the touch. Oh, what a great pass by McGrath on that play. Douthy cleaning up the miss. If you are the opposite post player of Ryan Gomes, you should have a field day because he will be double teamed all day long. Cockle for three. Buried it. Tom Cockle, a senior from Raymond, Nebraska. 50 family members driving down outside Lincoln to watch this game tonight. How far is that? Power. Oh, that's a change. If you're heavy on the on the gas. <laughs> Jay Kukaba is an enthusiastic player. He will be fired up all day long. Had his one of his best games of the year, 24 against Villanova in the Big East tournament in Madison Square Garden. From the free throw line, Moriker had a good look but missed. And a timeout. 15:43 left of the opening half. Providence Pacific going at it in Kansas City. This is the sixth tournament appearance for Pacific. Their first Bob since 1997 when they lost to St. Joseph in the first round by 10, 75, 65. Providence knows all about postseason play. 15th tournament appearance. Their last stop was in 2001, losing to Penn State in round one by 10, 69-59. And of course, Rick Pitino at one time was the coach here. Billy Donovan, his star, and they made it to the Final Four that season. Great basketball tradition at Providence College. Providence, three of six to start this game, 50%. Pacific knocking down three of eight for 38%. This zone is very extended. What they're trying to do is attack the guy who catches the ball and then slide into the lanes and go for steals, and they were successful on that particular play. It is not a passive zone laid back. Gomes, the key to this team. Three turnovers by oh, Pacific, and Gomes just, uh, just easily turns in for a second bucket, six points. He shoots 50% from the floor, and when you're three or four feet out, you understand why. Well, I'll tell you what, they're gonna have to double team him. So far, not doing that. Gomes is the kind of player that draws double teams, and if you don't, he can get 40 on you. The question becomes whether the other guys can produce when he passes the ball back down. Good patience on the perimeter. Warrior kicks doubly. Defense collapse. He takes the shot. Loose ball. And Providence doubted, reached out, and grabbed it. Turns it over, coming back the other way. There's a block, and that's the whistle right in front of us by Sheku Kaba. That'll be number two on the senior. That's not a good sign right there. Maya Davis and Kaba showing good sportsmanship, helping one another up. But two fouls in the first half. He will take a seat, and Dwight Brewington will replace Kaba. That is not good news for Providence. He is a spark plug type of player. Brewington, a freshman from Lynn, Massachusetts, just outside Boston. He is the player that has a hearing deficit. Deaf, and only hear about 40%. Very interesting guy. Cockle, wide open. Got it. Nice spot up. Second one for Cockle from that area. Two threes for Cockle, and uh, 
the family from Nebraska enjoying the early minutes here at Kemper in Kansas City. We're tied at 11. Pacific looks very smooth on offense. Oh my goodness. How quick is that touch and go? Eight. Ryan Gomes averaging just under 19 points a game. It's amazing how many times he catches and scores close to the basket. He does his work before he catches the basketball, so when he catches it, it's easy. Newton's in the game for Pacific. Long jumper finds the net by Morgan. He's got seven early. Pacific is a very good passing team, using some zone of their own, a 1-2-2 two, two variety. Shots usually come from the corner. The back guys have to go all the way out to the corner in this kind of a setup. Bob, I see both teams falling into a bit of a groove now. After the first two or three minutes uh, up tight, yeah. But I, I, I see both teams falling into their game. Getting into the rhythm right now. Lewington gives off a grab. Oh, the follow by Dalton. Have you ever heard that it's hard to block out in a zone? Nobody touching the 6'10 leaper. Well, he has so much more control emotionally as a player than he was a year ago. He's able to shake things off and move ahead, move on. When you are not blocked out, a clear path to the basket. And that's a nice looking duck. You ever do one like that? On a, on a ladder. <laughs> both teams choosing to eschew the man-to-man -man and go with the zone. But both teams, very effective passing so far. Tough baseline D. They try to feed it back inside. Cockle has it on the corner. Back baseline up top, doubling. Long shot. Kept alive. Pacific, fresh clock. Davis bounces it off the top of the glass. Gomes posting. Lost it. Doubtful trying to make a baseline move. Paco lets the traffic fly by. Now the long shot. Three ball. Wow. Davis and Pacific knocking down threes. That's four in this first half at the 12 minute mark. Very well balanced offensive squad. Understand the value of passing. Pacific four of six from behind the arc and a timeout after the turnover. Tigers up by one. Pacific leads Providence by one and Bob the story three point shooting Pacific 67 percent. Four of six from the outside. Kako has hit two from almost the exact same spot. Marika has hit one and Davis has hit one. Four threes, that's why they're up by one. They are going very well against the zone defense. Of course, very difficult to cover a lot of territory when you're in zone. Timmy Wells decides to stay with it, but extend it more so they can get up on shooters. The reason they're getting those threes, Greg, is their passing is outstanding. They're hitting people on the post, looking opposite, doing all the right things. Problem's trying to create some tempo with a trap out of it. Paco with the head fake, tries to look inside, goes back on the wing, loose ball, 10 on the shot. Tough D by Providence. Dowsett, collision, got a piece of the ball, but also knocked Yango down. Well, the passing ability, like I said, they've made six baskets and they have six assists so far. So that is outstanding passing. Right here, this was a great play. Step through on the trap, find the open man. Guillaume Yingo, 63%, makes the first. Follow the game on CBS Sports Line's Game Center and get more than just the game. Get play-by-play -play coverage as it happens without having to refresh the page. Check it out at cbsportsline.com. Think about this. Guillaume Yango from France did not even start on his college team, the College of Southern Idaho. And here he is starting his first year Division I basketball as a junior in the NCAA tournament. Averaging 10 points a game. Tuka Koti is in the game for Providence from Finland. Dudley and Davis really moving the ball nicely. Guards have good quickness. Unfortunately, a travel on that particular play. 
fourth turnover for Pacific. Friars have turned it over five times. It's the 12th seed against the fifth seed. Right now, an interesting thing has happened. Dothit has gone to the bench. He is their center. Sanders in. So Providence playing with no center. But Gomes can patrol the paint on offense. There's a steal. Davis takes it up. Got it. Couple of bounces and in. <laughs> Sanders had an opportunity for a block, but Davis got his body in between Sanders and the ball. Davis with five points. He's the first team all Big West pick. Under 10 and a half minutes left in this fast-paced opening half. Night session in Kansas City. A lot of bodies. Cote on the backside got the loose ball in the bucket. Right place at the right time. Tuka will man the inside position in the zone and have Sanders and Gomes on the weak side for rebounding. His specialty is the three. He doesn't usually go inside. Loose ball, Pacific recovers. Taco with 17 on the shot. Double. Ball was kicked and a new shot clock. Pacific very active defensively at both ends of the floor. Right here, a quick steal, jumping in the passing lane. And watch on this shot how Davis keeps the ball on his hip and the defensive guy on the other side. Sanders unable to get the block. Pacific 11 points off turnovers so far in this game. Providence only four. Under 10 minutes. How about that? Reaching. And I mean, reaching out for that hoop was Tyler Newton. 6'10 frame out of Burbank. Short. Tigers with another rebound. Up by 5. 22-17. Davis and traffic. Newton. Wow. Quality shots, Greg. Quality Every possession. Passing. Quality passing leads to quality shots. They're looking good. Pacific up seven. Why? Because they're a great passing team. Davis will penetrate. A layup will happen on the ensuing play. Watch as he goes into the paint. Kotai will come up and stop him. Newton in the exact right place. That makes it easy. Almost every basket they've scored have been with assist in this game. Big numbers for Maya Davis on the season. The player of the year in the Big West. Bob well, can see why early in this game. He's made threes. He's made passes. Totally in control. He's made steals. Little guy controlling the game so far. Last two goals for Pacific. You mentioned eight assists on those nine field goals. They have dissected the Providence zone. Kaba back in the game with two fouls. Tim Welsh does not want to let this game get away from him. He needs that boost that Kaba can give and the scoring. Gomes present early, but right now has not seen many touches lately. Eight points for Gomes. That foul was whistled on Tyler Newton of Pacific, his first. Little left hand, nice body control, baseline. Cote with his second bucket, four points. You wonder if Providence will go man. Here they go. First man-to-man -man possession. Tim Welsh has seen enough of the dissection of his zone by this terrific passing team, so he's going to go man-to-man. -man. This is not their staple. Let's see how they play it. Lowry Bowden in the game for Pacific. Five on his back. Yango. Bowden swings it up. Puff shot. Gomes pulls down the miss, and the Friars win a run. Haba. Gomes for three. Got it. Can he do everything on the floor? Threes, run the bait, board, power inside, pass. That was a little slump. Had nine against Villanova. And that first round loss in the Big East tournament. Already with 11 in this first half. He's feeling it. I don't know about that. A turnover 
And that's seven on Providence. 7.34 left in the half. Up and down we go. Pacific by two. Nice for, for, for Pacific. Craig Bowler, Jack Bob Wenzel back. Interesting. This is Big East, Providence against the mid-major of the Big West. Big East, Big West. Ah, lots of miles between those two schools. <laughs> Pacific, very impressive so far, I think. Their passing has been great. They get a, an assist on almost every play. They dissected the Providence zone, which has been very good. Providence now has to go man-to-man. -man. Gomes has established himself. Sheku Kaba playing with two fouls. He is in there as the two guard right now. They need his enthusiasm. Marika with the ball has been terrific. Good score. Nice ball movement. Taco looks inside. Bounce pass. Back it in. Yango. Bounced it in. Guillaume Yango. His first bucket, four points. Shoots 58%. That's right, 58 on the floor. And he takes only shots that he can make. Good judgment. Close to the basket stuck. Sanders the lob inside. Dalfit. And now there's the tee. You know, I mentioned earlier about how he was able to control that anger. Last year it was a problem. Douthit showing some emotion and he was teed up. Inside, there's some jostling here. Looks like he pushed off with his right hand. And maybe Yango took a dive on that particular play. And Douthit, unhappy, gets the tee. Yango's pretty big to be falling down with just a touch like that, don't you think? Uh, yeah. Good job. Douthit in foul trouble, bound with three. Davis misses. Well, they will play without him. Tukakoti, who has given them a lift off the bench. Look at this unique style by Davis. Gets down really low. I'm not sure I could bend down that far. At all. Who can? <laughs> Works for him. 85% from the free throw line. A unique style, to say the least. Well, he was a young man to hit a pair of free throws with five ticks on the clock to beat Northridge to win that Big West tournament title. So whatever works, huh? Good speed, good vision. Look how he keeps his head up even when he's being pressured. Morker the switch, Kockel on the drive around the perimeter, and another whistle inside. Three seconds. Don't see that call very often. Fifth turnover for Pacific with a five-point lead, under seven minutes left. Opening half in Kansas City. Interestingly enough, Dalton, a much better defensive force than Cote. But Cote, a better offensive player. 13 for Gomes. Wow. You know what? He started with the right shoulder, switched left, and got the layup. 13 points for Ryan Gomes. He knows the geography of the lane. Knows where people are. He knows where he is. Nice double. Providence picking up the defense. Strong move. Angle with the left hand in the lane. Playing a great game right here. Played a great game against Northridge, had 22 in the championship game. He was a powerful force. Sanders top of the key. Gomes on the wing. Under six minutes. Brewington. Slices, dices, the bounce, the rebound to Pacific. Well, look at the speed. Davis pushes. Now he pulls up. Short. You want to see a guy get around in the lane, you can watch Ryan Gomes. We've isolated him here. Watch as he catch. He steps through right here, gets the ball between, uses the goal to protect against the defense. And then the double team at the other end, Yango waits till it leaves. Uses his left very, very nicely. Nice post play at both ends by these two teams. McGrath back in the game. He needs to be an offensive force to get something going. He's a good three-point shooter who's been in a slump lately. Bowden got the foul at first. Kaba way out. Sanders. Loose ball, tip, volleyball. Friars have it, 29 of the shot. I thought Pacific did a good job doubling Gomes as soon as he caught it that time. 
over the top. Bowden his second. Well, some of the players on Pacific from foreign countries, Yango from France, two Swedish players, and a Yugoslav. Guillaume Yango, they said he was from Paris, but they said he played in Dijon. That is in the south of France. I was on a train one time. You know how trains in France that go 125 miles an hour? I hope you buckled up cool? for safety. No, it was smooth. It was great. Sanders forced it inside. Turnover. Quick outlet. Look at that. Floats it up. Got it. Whoa. They are an opportunistic team with the break. Lots of points off turnovers in this game for Pacific. Davis went into the crowd, up and quickly back down court. Eight points for Maya Davis, the senior. This is the first time I've seen him in person, and he is quicker than I thought watching him on tape. Cockle the rebound. Pacific having a fine half, both ends of the court. 31-24. Keep in mind, they are a 12 seed, Providence the 5 seed. Newton, got it. Boy, he's been some big offense off the bench. Bob Thomason told me yesterday in practice that he loves this kid, Newton. He thinks he's got great potential and great upside. Very enthusiastic for a 6'10 player. His middle name? Isaac. How about that? Tyler Isaac Newton. How about Sanders? Answers with the big three. Now, let me ask you, if his middle name is Isaac, does he defy gravity? <laughs> he hopes to tonight. <laughs> he did on that last play. Morick around the drive. Cote, riding him like a blanket. Cockle, traffic, boy, he got knocked down. Sanders flew into him. Poked in the eye. Unintentional. Sanders going after him to challenge it, trying to be aggressive right here. And he hits him with his left hand. Looks like he got him in the right eye. First foul on Sanders. You don't want your coach getting any ideas about taking you out in this situation. You want to shoot your own free throws. Technically, if he were injured, he could come out and you could put in someone for him. But Kako wants no part of that. Those his numbers. Very, very valuable player. Struggles from the free throw line, however, only 58%. As a team, Pacific is very tough on the line, Bob, 73.8. And Maya Davis, who takes a lot of them there, point guard, and Dudley, the other guard, 85 and 91%. So when you're ahead, like they are most of the time, 17 and 1 in their lead, those guys have it at the end of the game. Cockle sinks both, eight points. For Tom Cockle in Pacific leads Providence 333 before half. Pacific leading Providence by eight, 35 27, 333 left before halftime. Bob has been balanced scoring for the Pacific Tigers, eight points for both Davis and Cockle, seven for Moriker and Yango with six. Newton off the bench with six, and Gomes has been the man for Providence with 13. The difference in the game so far really is nine turnovers for Providence, only five for Pacific, doing a much better job of handling the basketball. 18 points off of those turnovers for Pacific. Chris Anren in the game. He also from Sweden. So he and Marika might bump into one another out here. Nine on the shot, Kaba. Goes inside, tough deep by Pacific, Moriker, loose ball, 2-1, Gomes shoots it, around and out. Davis, Moriker for three, off the mark, Gomes, right place, right time. Providence struggling to find alternate scorers besides Gomes right now. McGrath, the guy who usually capable scorer. Cobbett playing with two fouls in right now. Dalton had a couple of buckets. He's on the bench with three. After that technical. Or nearly stolen. McGrath will fire for long range and buries it. That's the guy they need to step up. Very little three-point shooting so far for Providence. 
He is their chief guy in that particular department. He's streaky. Has taken 178 threes now, about six per game. He has been off in the last three games, two for 19 from three-point range. Earlier in the season, much, much better. Davis misses the fall away. Here comes Jones and company. Big fella handles the ball well. Kicks to the corner, now up to Anrin. Off the side of the iron, McGrath with a fresh 35. Again, the three ball, too long. Doubly rebounds. Pacific wants to push. Three on three. Did you say that J.P. Kaba has the green light? A three miss on one side, a three miss on the other side. I think that light is bright green. <laughs> Gomes is running the floor. Went to the low block, wanted the ball, but they could not find the entry pass, so McGrath backs it out, 110 before halftime. Cote. Inside the arc, too strong. Anron had a, oh, nicely done. Kept it alive. Kaba. The green light finally went on, and he made one. His hands are out, he's a little frustrated. Cuts it down to two. Back in Kansas City, 52 seconds and change. Pacific leading Providence by two. When you give a player a green light, he can miss two threes in a row and step up confidently, almost from out of bounds, as Shea Kukaba does. Finally, he's telling us he's made one. He and McGrath, the last two possessions, have made threes. That is good news for Timmy Welsh and the Friars. And they are back in it. Doubly. Holds a double team. Ball was kicked. They'll reset the shot clock. So five seconds separate game and shot clock. The interesting thing about a situation like this, I would take the first good shot that develops out of your offense. No point in running it all the way down to the end, especially since you played well the entire first half. The guy who can take it to the basket out of a spread offense is Davis. They are choosing to hold it. There will be time between when they shoot, Providence can get a shot off. Drewington, he needs to play him square. If he pushes him to one side or the other, that's not a good thing. Switch to zone right here, out of it. Interesting play by Providence. Six on the shot, ten on the game clock. Davis now puts it on the floor, drives, dishes, got it! Oh! With three on the shot. McGrath, long range. Missed it. Davis with 10 points. Balanced attack, Bob, by Pacific. One-sided for Providence. Gomes with 13. Kaba has knocked down a pair of threes for six. Let's go with courtside, and here's Scott Kaplan. All right, Craig, thank you. Coach, for much of that first half, you were frustrating to Providence. Why so? Well, uh, you know, they hurt us on boards early, but I think our defense started clogging things up. And when we rebound the ball, we can get out on the break and, and do things well. The last about three minutes of the half, we didn't shoot the ball very well. I thought we had some great shots, but they got second opportunities and made a couple threes to close it down. All right, Coach, thank you. Craig, that's why Pacific comes into this tournament with 15 straight wins, what we saw here in the first half. 37-33, Great Gumbel will be coming up on the other side, singular at the half. The second half of Pacific and Providence moments away. We'll return to KC after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS, the exclusive home of NCAA basketball. Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Nextel, Miller, Capital One, and by the new Chevrolets. Welcome back, sold out Kemper Arena in Kansas City at the half, Pacific leading Providence 37-33. Bob, first half numbers. But I'll tell you what, they reveal something very interesting. They handle the ball very well. Right here, field goals about even. That's why the game is about even. 
threes about even. That's why the game is about even. But this area, the turnovers and the points off the turnovers by Pacific, very much in their favor, 15 to six. That's why they have the four point lead right now. Interestingly enough, Providence, a team that averages nine steals a game, zero steals in the first half. Credit the ball handling of Pacific. You go to Gomes on the first play and he misses, but that's what you want. Doubly has it, Moriker. Gomes at 13 in the first half. Balance scoring by Pacific. And an early turnover by the Tigers, so back the other way. Maya Davis has been incredible in this game. The Big West Player of the Year. He shot the ball well from the perimeter. He was active on defense, and then also he steered the ship. Lots of points and assists for that young man. Very, very sound player. Interestingly enough, Douthit with three fouls because of the technical. Of the nine turnovers Providence had in the first half, Douthit had four of them. They actually played better without him when he was on the bench. He starts the second half. McGrath, good look, high off the window. Last touch by Providence. They played a minute of the second half at Kemper. The 12th seed, Pacific Tigers against the 5th seed, Providence Friars. Craig Providence getting away from their zone, playing man-to-man. -man. It was more successful for them in the first half. Yango, short, Gomes gathers it in, baseline. Here comes McGrath, leaves it for Kaba on the wing. Wants the long ball, bounces it. How about that? Gomes was not blocked out and got the easy bucket. And that's why you take threes in transition. A lot of people don't like an early three, but I think it's a great play because we're tougher to block out in transition. And Gomes shows why. Gomes won a 20 finalist for the Wooden Award. Davis on the floor. Yango scoots by. Yango with eight. Waving it off. Yango picks up the foul. This is a great drive. The bump, the official determined, was before the foul. A circus shot right there. Sanders slaps the ball, upset he couldn't get the bucket and the foul, but he did pick up the foul. So Sanders was the one who made that circus play on the last one, and they only got an inbound play out of it. Sanders only 55% from the free throw line. Gets the first. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed more than $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Sanders makes both. A yeah, good start for Providence. They got it inside twice to Gomes, and then Sanders twice on opportunity baskets. Yango scored last time inside. Well played game by both teams. Yango one on one with Dalton. Second opportunity fell off the iron. Sanders two on three. Slows it up. One thing about Dalton, who is very slow now, he's lost a shoe. They're going to wait for him. Okay, he not wait too long. The shot clock is running. 17. He can alter a lot of shots with that length of his. He does alter a lot of shots. He's got 91 blocks on the season. He's not going to block many shots with his shoe falling off right there. Unfortunately, Sanders stepped out of bounds on that play. Tenth turnover now for the Friars. Angle looks inside, gives it back out. Kako tied up, no whistle. Kako was perfect in the first half. Two for two from three-point range and made his two free throws for eight points. Angle backs in, double team. Nice as he sliced through the defense of Providence. Angle in double figures with ten. He used strength versus height on that particular play. Much shorter than Douthit, but took it to him when they get close like that. Advantage strength. Blocked, 
on the wing. And the whistle on Maya Davis. That will be his first. Right here, quickness on quickness. Davis can afford to take a chance like that with no fouls in the second half. Not a bad play for him to try to do that. He is really the two guard. David Dudley is really the point guard, but both very quick. The draft miss. Sanders miss. And now a takedown. Frustration foul by Sanders. Nice style point. <laughs> he was easy. He made this, missed the first shot right here. An easy play. And then he gets blocked. A little frustration. Pulls down the opponent. Second whistle on Sanders. 41 37 Pacific. 16 30 left. Davis knocked away. Last touch by Gomes. 23 on the shot clock. Cockle in front of us. Bobble inbounds for Pacific. Out of the Big West Conference. Went 17 and 1. And then won the Big West Tournament. Beating Cal State Northridge by 2. Thanks to a couple of Maya Davis free throws. On Selection Sunday, Utah State, the other team that was 17 and 1 in this league, was not invited, caused some consternation in certain circles. But you can see Pacific, an outstanding team. And they and Utah State tied 17 and 1 in league play. Terrific year, terrific year for the Aggies and Stu Morrill. Oh, they were tremendous. Kaba, long range, off the front of the iron. Newton leads it to Davis, tough pass. Yango on the trailer has it. Across the court, back inside. Yango stolen, but then stepped out of bounds. Boy, Kaba covering a lot of distance. 15.49 to go in Kansas City. Pacific leads Providence by four. Let's go courtside. Scott Kaplan with a story about the Swedish connection. That's right, Craig Bowler, Jack. You have Moriker on the Pacific side. You've got Anren on the side of Providence. These two guys were teammates this past summer playing for the Swedish national team. They played in the European Championships. Their team didn't win, but they got great experience playing against pros like Paul Gasol, Dirk Nowitzki. These guys, invaluable experience this summer. Friends from Sweden meeting here tonight in the NCAA basketball tournament, Craig. There is a foreign connection here. Pacific, as we mentioned. Cote from Providence, from Finland, and England from Sweden. Douthat has it for Providence, and the Friars down by four, and the basketball. One of the great players in Pacific history, Michael Olawakandi from England as well. Cote, short. Cockles played a fine game. He's solid. Handles the ball, passes the ball. Tough, hard nose. Only takes shots when they're available. Dubley puts it on the floor. Plenty of time on the shot. Pacific handles the ball well. Their spacing is so good. Providence, normally a team that creates a lot of turnovers. And right here. When you don't double-team Yango, he's got a lot of space to maneuver. That is going to get your big guy in foul trouble. And Douthat picks up his fourth. Bob, Douthat. actually, they're going to give that to Kaba. Ah, and that's a break for Providence. Yango makes good on the free throw, 11 points. Yango coming off 22 points, 8 rebounds in the title game in the Big West Tournament against Northridge. In Kansas City, Pacific and Providence. Pacific, the 12th seed in the St. Louis bracket. Providence, the fifth seed. Pacific led Bob at the half, 37-33. Giong Yango. Cockle and Maya Davis 
have all contributed for the Tigers. Providence pretty much a one-man show to this point, Ryan Gomes. Well, the All-American having a typical night for him, scoring, rebounding, and right here, they're trying to force it inside to him. But atypical of Providence, not forced any steals. That's their first steal of the game. Normally average nine, and that's why they are in a hole right now to the 12th seed. In the St. Louis bracket, one upset so far. Nevada beat Michigan State. All the other higher seeds have won so far. You see three ties, four lead changes. Under 15 minutes left here in Kansas City. Second half. Good patience by the Friars. Turn around, Gomes hangs on that pivot with the left hand. Gomes now with 17. How about that, Craig? You can tell why he's an All-American and he is carrying his team right now. No scoring help, really. Cote has been somewhat of a help in the first half. Doubt it. Invisible on offense. Cockle drives left hand. Bottom of the iron. Doubt it has it now. Back up from McGrath across midcourt. Providence trying to push. Tempo. Give and go. And a bucket drops for Cote. His six point three buckets. Pacific 43. Providence 41. Kemper Arena, Kansas City, 18,000 on hand. Kansas and Illinois, Chicago will follow this game. And that's what many of these, of these are fans are waiting for. 18,000 of them right here in Kemper Arena waiting the Jayhawks, but they're seeing a good one right here. This is our bracket, Providence and Pacific here. Kansas and Illinois, Chicago to follow. Providence's defense has finally stepped up. The story of the game has been Pacific's stellar offense and passing, handling of the basketball, forcing Providence to come out of their standard zone and play man to man. And this man handling the ball, a touch on every play would be wise. Tough D by Newton, hands off with grass in the corner. Brewington now has it across the court. Gomes misfires on the three. Newton, who's had a strong game off the bench, pulls down the Aaron shot. Davis behind his back, feeds inside for a strip. Leads it up to Gomes. Douthit had trouble with that pass. Davis shot right by him. And contact before the throwback to Cockle. Well, Tim Welsh does not like to see his center handling the ball in the middle of the lane, passing to his power forward in the fast break situation. But Providence is a team that plays with a great deal of energy, and they didn't have that energy in the first half. Second half, much better. Turnovers beginning to even out for these teams. Pacific had a huge advantage early, and that's why the score has evened out as well. Well, those turnovers have cost Providence. Pacific has turned the 10 TOs into 20 points. A little blood on the elbow of the All-American player. Gomes, the anchor for this team. They will fix that up and get him right back in. Bob Almost Andrew. at his average already. Bob Andron had checked in for Douthit. Now Douthit had to come back in after the blood on the elbow of Gomes. And he checks in instead for Ryan. Boy, a half minutes left. Boy, has he been solid. Good handle, good passer. Myrick has started off well, but has not done a lot in the second half. A very skillful player at 6'9". Davis quick. Oh, a little circus shot nearly went in. Doused at the rebound. Pacific by two. Where will Providence go with Gomes on the bench? Cote, contact, no whistle. Short on the shot. Here come the Tigers. Cockle wants it deep off the front of the iron. And Davis up on the... up on the media table here on courtside. <laughs> That's what you like. Big time hustle, big time aggression by both squads. Pacific and Providence feed into the St. Louis bracket. The Tigers up by two with 11.48 remaining here at Kemper Arena in Kansas City. 
And Fred, you begin to get the feeling that Providence is playing more aggressively in the second half, which is what they would like to do. Eighteen thousand Kemp Arena, Kansas City, heading down the home stretch. Eleven forty-eight remaining. Pacific up two on Providence. Ryan Gomes was just out of the lineup for a moment for a blood situation. He is now back. The All-American for Providence, 17 points and eight boards in this one. He is carrying the Friars and Pacific very well balanced. Everybody involved in Maya Davis, the leader. How quick was that? Underneath and the dish to Tyler Newton with eight off the bench. Well, Davis makes everyone better. Lots of nice... Cote pops out, 20 on the shot. Coming up on 11 minutes left. Craig, I'm so impressed with Pacific's passing. They've got 17 field goals and 13 assists on those 17 made baskets. Do it with the pass, not the dribble. And Bob, what's impressive, the beyond that is the penetration and then the kick out. Gomes in traffic, Haynes and Forbes. Gomes with 19, you're right, he's putting Providence on his back. He is really carrying them. He was fronted on that play, so Brewington took a long shot knowing Gomes would be there for the offensive board. It's been all Guillaume Yengo for Pacific in this half. Ball was thrown away, and Pacific coming back the other way. Ryan Gomes, when he is fronted, gets great position up between two people. Power personified. Even going to the floor, he gets a nice little English on this one. This guy knows his way around in the paint. 13th double-double this season. 19 points and I 10 rebounds. His 34th career double-double. And you know what he shoots from the free throw line? 87%. And he gets fouled a lot. How about the reach in? He can steal quick hands as well. Not a smart pass by Pacific. Two-point Tiger Lee. Providence had zero steals until just a few minutes ago. They averaged nine a game, and now that they've gotten a few, they've gotten back in the game. Scoring, however, from other sources besides Gomes has been sparse. Around and out. Ball tip, still loose. Here comes Pacific. Bowman was tied up, no whistle. Cockle took a bullet pass. And now Pacific will slow it down. Davis running the point. 22 on the shot. Nine and a half minutes to play. Davis wide open three. Pacific has numbers. Gomes leans. Knocked away. Fresh clock. Well, they boggled that. They had a four-on-one and came up empty and then eventually get a charge on the play. Not what you want from Providence in that situation. Right here, Brewington going hard to the basket. Instead of pulling up and landing on two feet, crashes right into the defender. Weak side help very much there. And as a result, it's going the other way. Brewington with his second foul. You know what I'm impressed with Davis about? He has great quickness, but he only uses it when necessary. Doesn't get out of control. Sometimes you have guys that are so quick, they go faster than they need to. That is not the case with Maya Davis. This young man knows how to play basketball, knows when to shut it on, shut it off, and put it on. Long three finds the bottom of the net. Cockle, who had a pair of threes in the first half, now with 11 points out of Raymond, Nebraska. He brought the whole town down to watch this game tonight. McGrath. And away from the ball, an elbow. Yango. Two on Guillaume Yango. Douthit back in for defensive purposes. Sanders needs to get involved with the offense, as does Kaba and McGrath. Three ball on the way, got it. 
Rob Sanders. Eight points for Sanders. Five in this half out of Lou London, Connecticut. Very athletic. 8.25 to go. Two-point game, Pacific and Providence. Paco, nice lob. Yango. Bang! 14 for Yango. Doubt that fronts. No weak side help. Result, easy dunk. Providence not a team that plays a lot of man-to-man, -man, forced into doing it because Pacific played so well against their zone in the first half. McGrath wants the long ball, short. Pacific across midcourt. Dudley winds his way back. Under eight minutes to play. The 12 seed looking for an upset on the five. Big East versus Big West. Power conference against the mid-major. How about that? Inside. Strong move, Bucket. Yango beginning to take over this game with 16. Can you believe he did not start for his junior college squad? No. <laughs> his first year in Pacific in the NCAA tournament. 52-46. Pacific on top of Providence. Pacific leads Providence by 6, 52, 46. And Bob, I know the turnovers have evened out some, but when Providence, however this game ends, they're going to go back and look. 23 points. Pacific has scored off Providence turnovers. What separates these two teams with a 7-32 remaining? Well, that's it. You know, that's what, what's been happening. But Providence has evened it out lately. They've played much better defense, much more aggressive defense, creating some steals in the late going. Experience, however, counts for a lot. Bob Thomason told me yesterday, in close games, his team is very confident. They've played a lot of them, and they've won them all. Sanders, you could tell the minute he let it go, short on the three, then reached in for the foul. The quality of shots by each team is very important in endgame situations. Providence not getting them, Pacific is. There is a timeout, 7.21 left, Pacific on top of Providence. Tournament news and notes, higher seeds having their way so far. 8-0, by the way, today. Big East, ACC perfect in Utah. Loses in the first round, third time in 24 appearances. Pacific, very smart. Kako makes a three. They've shot well from the perimeter, but their passing has been exquisite. No help on the weak side. Yango goes crazy. Kako to Yango again. Yango's got 16 points. Kako, five assists. And the passing has been superb by this Pacific team. On their 20 baskets, they have 16 assists. Unselfish, they have the inclination to pass and the skill as well. Worker pops out, takes the ball, cockle, drops it inside. Yingo, strong move, bounce it off the rim. Now, Bob, let's talk about the Big West Conference. A lot of talk on Selection Sunday, Utah State, becoming the only team ranked in both polls never to be taken into the NCAA tournament. Both these schools, Pacific, Utah State, coming out of the Big West. Well, there's the comparison. Both were 17 and one, and it seems as if one of them had to win their conference tournament. Cal State Northridge beat Utah State, and as a result, at 25 and four, left out of the big dance. Yango makes both free throws. 18 points for the junior from Paris, France. Seven minutes left. Can a 12 seed beat the five? Well, Manhattan beat Florida, and the only other lower seed to win was Nevada beating Michigan State. So in this year of parity, the higher seeds really have dominated. Bob, somebody besides Gomes has to step up with the Friars. He's 8 of 15. The rest of the team, now 10 of 34. Well, that is the exact thing that we've talked about all day. Gomes has carried them on, their, on his back. They are not getting quality shots other than his. Moriker flies through for the rebound. Well, whistle stops play. Over the back. Well, don't miss a minute of March Madness. Good live video from all the games not shown in your area, plus access archives of games you missed highlights, press conferences, and much more. Go to NCAASports.com and click on live video. Well, down eight, you asked who can step up for Providence. McGrath 
does not seem to want to. Sheikh Kaba, I'm sure, is willing, and Sanders perhaps as well. But right now, very hesitant team in white. Anrin answers the call. A much needed bucket for Providence. Anrin's first bucket, the senior from Sweden. And he wants to make sure that Mariker doesn't get all the accolades in this team. In this game, both guys from Sweden playing on opposite coasts in the United States. Dolm flipped it away. Morica recovers, 17 on the shot. Davis looks inside. He's dangerous from that spot. He has great quickness, and he gets to that quickness in a hurry. One step, and he's at full speed. Picked up by Kaba. High off the window and got it. Clutch player. You can see why he is the Big West player of the year. Gomes, I get the feeling, feels a little panicky. Says, I'm going to have to do it. 5-17 left, 56-48 Pacific. Pacific has the lead because they're getting better quality shots. The shots Providence getting contested, not executing offensively very well. Davis again around Kaba to the corner. Good passing, good patience, Pacific. Loose ball. Friars have it. Here comes Kaba. Goes right, goes left, throws it away. He wanted Gomes baseline. Gomes is dragging. He's in the backcourt behind the basketball, having to carry this team, starting to feel fatigue. Dwight Brewington has come off the bench for Providence. He'll check in. Next whistle. This Pacific team beat that Nevada team that we just talked about upsetting Michigan State. They also played against Duke and against St. Joseph's this year. So stiff competition, not something that they are foreign to. Oh, everything working. Two, one on the shot. Davis, close. Coming up on the four-minute mark. McGrath, Lobs, Gomes, got it. You can tell he needs some air. For a guy who's tired, he's still running the floor on the offensive end, but his mouth is wide open, gasping for air right here. So his shorts are down around the cap. And a timeout much needed for Ryan Gomes. Six-point game in Kansas City. Pacific, 56, and the Friars, 50. The 12 seed Pacific up six right here. Later on, Kansas against Illinois Chicago right here. And later on, UAB and Washington. Bob, I'm the, anxious the to St. Louis bracket. Yeah, it's tough. I'm anxious to see how Kansas fares. Simeon struggling with the groin. Lankford has knee problems. Illinois Chicago, this will be a very interesting matchup, the late game here in Kansas City. Illinois Chicago, highly motivated. They have been to the NCAA tournament two years ago in Dallas, and a lot of the same players are on that team. Of course, Kansas has not lost a game in March in two years to the Final Four of the last two seasons. Tyler Newton, his middle name. I said it once, I gotta say it again. Tyler Isaac Newton. <laughs> gotta love it. 65% free throw shooter. Newton was the guy who threw the rocks off the top of the building to talk about gravity, right? <laughs> <laughs> Missed the free throw. Coach T brings it down, now hands him a graph. Time a factor. Quality of shots. Big time factor in in-game situations. Providence trailing. They must get quality shots and as fast as possible. Coach. That is not quality. A follow away. Gomes. Cote. Stick to itiveness on the boards for Providence. Showing some heart right here. They have not had a lot of those kinds of baskets in the game. Cote is a three-point artist. A 55% shooter from outside the arc. His buckets tonight have come inside, mostly on offensive rebounds. And that is not his game, although showing diversity in this one. Our CBS Sports Line stat of the game, it is points off turnovers, Pacific taking advantage, putting 23 down, and get complete tournament coverage at cbssportsline.com. Check this routine on the free throw line. Maya Davis kneels down, waits, and then shoots. It works for him, 85%. 
Davis with 13. A possible upset in the making, Kansas City, Kemper Arena. 58-52, the 12th seed against the number five, Providence Friars, and a timeout. We'll be back to Kemper after this time on CBS. Pacific leading Providence by 6, 302 remaining. Timeouts, three apiece, possession arrow pointing to Pacific. Now on that Providence bench during the timeout, Ryan Gomes has been worked on by the trainer and it's the left calf. And Bob, I don't know if it's pulled or in the sense of fatigue or dehydration. Cramping could be a possibility. I think it cramped up. I watched him on the last possession defensively, walking on it gingerly, but he's a tough guy. Possible upset right here, a 12 and a 5 seed. Keep in mind, Pacific this year, 13 and 2 in games decided by 10 points or less. They know how to play when it's tight. Under three minutes left. Six-point Pacific lead. Every possession now playing a part in the outcome of this game for Providence. McGrath, Yango picks him up, cuts down the lane. That the seventh foul, so Andron will shoot one and one. Cockle picks up the foul, and that is the 17th foul, so Andron toes the line. Nobody in the double bonus so far. Andron seldom used sub but over the years he has played a great deal coming up big made a two a while ago providence still struggling to find scorers besides their all-american gomes bob only his sixth trip to the free throw line he's one of five on the season big pick the right made. side to make one three points for andron all in this half a senior six seven two twenty as a team, and think about this down the stretch, Providence 72% as a team from the free throw line. Anron, big, big pair of free throws. Pacific been in a lot of close games this year, as I mentioned. They're 13 and 2 in close games. So when they get in these kinds of situations, very confident. And Maya Davis with the basketball, I would trust him anytime. He has played spectacularly tonight. Davis picked up by McGrath. Under two and a half to go. 20 on the shot clock. Baseline is available for drives right here. Doubly. Kaba picks him up. Nearly had the steal. Five on the shot, four on the shot, three on the shot. And a reach in with two on the shot clock. Unbelievable play right there. You know, a lot of times you say, how can he foul at this point? But I'll tell you what, Davis creates that foul by splitting two defenders. You gotta call that, they knocked him to the floor. Very unusual style at the free throw line. Gets down like a catcher in baseball, waits for the ball, catches it when he's like that. Can you call strikes and balls on this? Looks like a strike right down the middle. And then goes into it, but he is very successful there. Davis three of four from the line. Deep knee bend, short, but he grabs the miss. Credit Newton kept the ball alive with his long arms. That is a killer kind of play when you're behind. Under two minutes, Pacific the 12th seed, Providence the five in the St. Louis bracket. No reason to foul right here. Providence gonna play straight up. Davis, the guy who is the most difficult to guard in this situation. Nice play got by Gomes hedging out. Six on the shot, five. Davis fires up the three. Got it! 16 for Maya Davis and a timeout. Work that shot clock to four. 129 left. Davis dials and hits. Well, the Pacific Band is playing their tune here in Kansas City. 
And Davis, Bob, working the shot clock, and that is a long downtown three. And nothing but bottom. Keep in mind, it was a four-point game till he made that. Now it's Panic City for the Friars, down seven. 120 to go. Cote, who wants the shot? Gomes says, I'll take it. Cockle covers up. And Pacific can smell upset. The 12 against the 5. The winner takes on Kansas, Illinois, Chicago winner. Chicago trying to stay close, but Davis extremely quick and great with both hands on the dribble. Backs it back out, nearly lost his foot in 49 seconds. Game clock, 10 on the shot. Doubling around the graph. Drives, hangs, got it off the window with the left hand. His first bucket, and that could be the dagger. Gomes, though, says, let's keep playing. Oh, my goodness. Davis is three, and that shot by David Dubley. You have got to be kidding me. Pacific, 63. Providence, 56. Pacific up seven on this spectacular off-handed, off-the-glass play, the first shot of the game for David Dudley. And can these guys feel it? You bet they can. Pacific, spectacular plays by their guards late, have them in great, great shape. 16 by Maya Davis. Yango, 18 points. And Cockle has thrown in 11. And Dudley's bucket right there may have done it. His first hoop of the night. Unbelievable. 34 and change remaining. Expect a trap and a timeout. Timeout Pacific. Great D by Providence on the end line out of bounds. Time to name the Chevrolet players of the game. And Maya Davis was 17 points, 6 of 14. Ryan Gomes, 23 points, 11 rebounds. Those are the Chevy MVPs. 34 ticks. Tough. Trap in the corner. Timeout Pacific. And another quick timeout from Kansas City. We'll be back. Some another. Timeouts, you see, one apiece for Pacific and Providence and the possession arrow. Bad news for Providence. It points, it points to Pacific. And there's the bench of Providence, the they, fifth seed. They have had a great, great season, ranked 12th in the nation. They have lost three in a row coming into this game, but it's over yet. Gomes says no way. Back-to-back -back buckets, 25 for the big guy. Providence trying to come back. It is not over yet, folks. The clock has only moved four seconds in the last three possessions. Providence forced two timeouts, got a steal, still in it. Pacific struggling with the inbound situation. Providence not fouling automatically, trying to trap first. This time they get one. Pacific did a good job, however, of inbounding to a great free throw shooter. Maya Davis, 85% from the free throw line for the year. And David Dudley, the other guard, 91%. So they did a good job of getting it to the right guy, knowing he'd be fouled. Rob Sanders with his third foul. Pacific, the 12th seed. On their way to an upset over Providence, the fifth seed in the St. Louis bracket. Pacific, you see their bench trying to hold in that emotion. 24 and 7 on the year. The 24 wins tying their school record for wins. A victory tonight gives them a new school record and a rare miss by Davis at the free throw line. Well, even if he makes this, they're two threes away from tying the game. Providence can choose to shoot the three or go to the basket, score, and call timeout. Nobody on the lane for Pacific. Davis, around and out. Providence must hurry. Kaba up the floor, looks inside. Now a lob pass to the corner. Little touch. Back to Kaba for three. Short, Gomes, tip wouldn't go, and Pacific has it.
That is not an intentional foul as far as the rule book is concerned. Sanders going after it. Providence got a clean shot on an inside outside three. Kaba missed it. And of course, Gomes didn't have the second effort in him late in the game. Sanders runs down David. And the 91% free throw shooter will have his chance. That's the fifth foul on Sanders, who had to run down court with nine seconds remaining. Well, Pacific has had an historical season. And if they get this win, it will be even more spectacular. Bob Thomason, their coach, played at Pacific, coaching there 16 years. Was an all-star player for that school. And this is our bracket, the St. Louis bracket. Illinois, Chicago, and Kansas coming up next. Current winning streaks. In college basketball, Gonzaga with 21 straight, Pacific with 15, tied with Illinois Chicago, who plays next against Kansas. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, doesn't get much better than this. Of course, a home game for the Jayhawks in this building. Veritably a home game. And Illinois Chicago street kids from Chicago know how to play, have been in the tournament two seasons ago. Cedric Banks and Martel Bailey leading that group. Doubly with 9.1 seconds. Short. Arms are locked on that Pacific bench. Emotions high on what could be. Pacific has not won a tournament game in the NCAA since 1971. Could it be tonight? Their head coach played on that club. Here we go, 64-58. Cote, short, and Pacific is up. They can smell it, they can feel it. This is what you live for, not only getting into the tournament, but oh, winning a game. Davis caps it! The 12 has upset the 5, Greg, again. 66-58 Pacific from the Big West. Knocked off the Friars from the Big East. The brackets. Pacific advances. Who will they play? Kansas or Illinois, Chicago next. This is Kentucky's bracket. St. Louis is the next stop for these teams. It's a final. Pacific moves on to round two. Their first win since 1971. Great gumble on the other side after this break.